Hello everyone. The time has finally come. I know a lot of you have been waiting around for this video, but this is the new car in the family. We are now two car family instead of a three car family or more. Um, this is our new, although not as new now, but still new enough, 2015 uh, Ford Taurus SEL. This has the regular 18 inch alloy wheels. There are optional bigger alloy wheels, but they're kind of ugly, so we just have the regular 18-inch alloy wheels, and it is a white diamond tri-coat metallic, well, I don't know if you would call it metallic, but white diamond tri-coat, which is a very beautiful color, which you can't really see right now because it's not in the sun, but anyway, uh, very, I mean, we've had this thing since May now, and I mean, it's just been great. Uh, we took it down to North Carolina, it was awesome highway cruiser, plenty of space. Um, and kind of a spiritual successor to the Crown Vic in, in, in one way or another. So, like a lot of more modern Fords, you have this up here, which is your secure code keyless entry. And of course, this one does have the intelligent key, so really simple stuff to operate. Now, because it is an SEL, um, it does not have the full power seat, only has the partial power seat, but this goes back, forward, up, down on both ends. So, and the lumbar is not power, but eh, how often do you really change your recline anyway? So, yeah, this is completely white on black. Plain. Um, which I think gives it a really nice look. Uh, I mean, it's really cohesive. The stitching is this nice silver color which matches all the silver accents in here. I think they did a really good job on refreshing this uh, versus the uh, older generation. So let's get in and we'll go ahead and turn it on. The I'm a Ford. But anyway, um, continuing on, the Taurus is actually really really nice on the inside. You've got a uh, nice padded material up here. Of course nice padded material on top of the dash here. You have padding that goes all the way here. Um, that's something they added for the 2013 redesign, which this is still part of. Um, but it's not just on top here. It actually follows through all the way down to the bottom here. So that's actually something really surprising that you wouldn't expect to find in a Ford. But it's there. You have, I mean, nice soft touch materials stop right here. And that's when it's over here next to the steering wheel. But you don't really notice that. Oh, there's some dirt over there. But anyway, uh, this being an SEL, it does have an auto down and auto up driver's side window. All the others are not. You have to step up to a limited for uh, for all that craziness. Uh, you do have automatic headlamps and you do have power pedals, which are over here on the steering wheel. They used to be up here on the dash, I believe. Your uh, dimness is right there. Nice leather wrap steering wheel. Of course, you'll find this in the Explorer and uh, a lot of other things, but nice steering wheel. I just I prefer four spokes because I like to put my hand right here at the base of the wheel. But again, nice cruise control uh, buttons. It actually tells you your speed when you engage the cruise control. Nice steering wheel buttons. The voice control works pretty well. A lot, a lot well than it, better than it used to actually. Um, so your left dial here controls all of this stuff so you can change your gauge views. So if you go to display mode, you can scroll up and down through the different modes. And I usually keep it on this one, just because you can see everything and all that's going on. You can see we do already have 4,274 miles. Let's go down to trip two, which I haven't ever reset. So lifetime average is 24 miles per gallon. It's rated at 2028, 20, I believe, something like that. So not doing too bad, about right in the middle. Um, of course, you can go here to fuel economy. That's the instant fuel economy, 30 minute. Uh, driver assist, this is where you tur turn off park aid and traction control. And you can do all kinds of my key and vehicle display and all kinds of settings in here. So, But anyway, uh, these, these work really well. Uh, I know a lot of people hate on this gauge cluster. And they say, oh, well, it doesn't have a real tack. But they've actually really improved this tack. Like, it's actually responsive like it didn't used to be. When these first came out, there was a noticeable lag. It's actually really good now. So... Anyways, nice nice uh, font. I really like the, the font that they use because they used it not only on the numbers, but they used a similar font here on the PRNDS. No more L button. This is the S because you do have paddle shifters here on the uh, gear, gear selector. But uh, over here on the side, on the other side you have, of course, entertainment, navigation, and phone. I can't talk today. 
they used to have a climate setting here that they took out for this model year, which is interesting. You used to be able to go into climate here and change your temperature, but it's really not that easy. All you do is go over here to the My Ford Touch system, and I know a lot of you are going to be like, oh, My Ford Touch, why? Why did you do it? Listen, guys, it's not bad. It's actually worked well 99.9% .9 of the time that we've had this car. I mean, the buttons just, they work. They have a nice feel to them. Well, I don't they really don't have any feel, but I mean, you get the little boop when you turn them on. It works really well. And there's physical buttons for everything down here. This, do, this does have navigation. It was one of two, and this one had nav, and the other one had the ugly wheels, so we took the nav over the ugly wheels, which actually the nav works really well. You can put in uh, your addresses via voice commands, which works pretty well too. The only thing I will say is this car gets funny when you connect more than one phone. Uh, it, it can't differentiate between the phones. It likes to try to connect to the other one, and you have to go and delete the other phone. It, it's kind of a pain, but uh, that's really the only thing that I've noticed. Uh, of course, this one that has navigation, of course, you have your sync services and everything. So you got Travel Link, um, and you can go in here, you know, traffic nearby, fuel prices, movies, weather, sports, and ski conditions for some reason. I don't know why. Um, we used this traffic when we went to uh, Charlotte, and it was actually really, really helpful because there's a map and you can avoid traffic, and there's actually a live um, weather map in here. Let's see if I can get that to come up, because it is a bit gloomy today. So if you hit weather, I'm going to go ahead and show you a map, and it'll show you all the current weather, all the major roads, and all that good stuff. So you can see there's the radar, showing that there's a little bit of rain around. This is actually really cool, because you can zoom in and out, and you can actually see what's right around you. So. Pretty cool system. Uh, I really think the Travel Link is something that's really, really neat. And it's well integrated. It's just down here in the information button. Um, you normally don't use the climate screen too much because you have all these controls down here. Uh, unless you really want the heated seat controls to be larger, the screen, the home screen is usually fine because you're not usually using the, your, your buttons here. And of course the my temp button which is a preset temperature that you have and you just hit my temp and it'll automatically go to that temperature right now i don't know what it's set to it's set to 72. so the middle dial here uh, controls your fan speed and you hit it to turn it completely off and of course this one up here is the volume now i know a lot of you are probably going to be thinking oh the gosh these touch capacitive buttons have got to be awful but again just like my ford touch it's way overhyped how bad it is because it's not bad at all it works you touch it lightly. I mean, absolutely no problem here. So, I mean, don't listen to the hype about these buttons and people that say that they're terrible. Now, I will give you that much on the Lincolns when you have to slide the volume thing. That doesn't work right. Thank God there's there's physical buttons for that. But for all intents and purposes, these buttons work great. So don't let anyone tell you otherwise because they're cr just crazy or following the hype because I've had this car for three months and they work perfect. You just touch them really lightly, you don't mash them, and it works. But anyway, of course, push button start. Um, you have the fancy big old Ford key where all the chrome is going to rub off. Um, you have mega ultra cup holders. Of course, not one, not two, but three cup holders. Up here, there is a power port and a place to put your phone. And interestingly enough, the uh, sync logo doesn't say Microsoft anymore, so... Just noticed that they took that off. In here in the center console, we've got some stuff already spilled. Some various things. A pickle. Um, you do have your AV inputs, you have your SD card inputs, and you have USB and power port capability in here. Put this pickle back. For some reason, there's a pickle in the car. And like Fords, they all have this little uh, thing up here where you can put pens, lip balm, cards, whatever. But anyway, let's go ahead and let's take a look in the back seat product placement go forward um rear view rear <laughs> rear view mirror mirror the rear view mirror is dimming I, I was putting those two words together map lights up here with your uh, controls for the sunroof it does tilt and slide and little uh sunglass holder there lighted vanity mirrors which are nice they actually uh they dim with the gauge cluster which is neat and up here is the microphone for the sync system but it's probably going to yell at me when I get out and I close the door. 
with the key in it. Well, maybe not. The back seat uh, is like the shining point of this car. The support is great on the cushions, comes right up under my legs. I mean, there's plenty of room to stretch out. Um, the materials all follow through from the front, so this is all nice padded material. This material is all the same. It's nice vinyl material um, and all the accents and everything. The door panel is harder down here, but I mean, what do you expect? Vents for the backseat passengers and, of course, power port. Armrest that you can pull down right here. Two cup holders in that. And this back seat is actually really nice because it sits a little bit higher. So you have a really nice view of the road out ahead of you. Two, uh, of course, map lights back here. The same damn thing they put in every car. Uh, and dampened handles, which is nice. And you have a little hook that comes down. So if you have any clothes or anything, you can pop them right in there. Let's go take a look at the trunk, which is another high point. Typical American full-size car. It has a massive trunk. It could give the Crown Vic a run for its money. Not quite as deep, but it is wide and it has great openings. There's not a lot of weird lips. There's just one where the uh, spare tire area is. And it's got these little hooks for your bags and everything. Let's go ahead and pull this up. Of course, it's not a full-size spare, but whatever. This is a 60-40 split uh, rear seat, so these do fold down and you can put things in there so that's nice and of course if by some weird happening your child gets stuck in the trunk and they give you this night this handle which a lot of people don't really understand but if you pull it bam trunk and they actually did a really good job of hiding the backup camera I know the car's a little dirty but it doesn't look tacked on at all they just kind of nicely put it there under the uh, Ford endum these uh, taillights, of course, are all LED. Everything back here is LED, I believe, except for the backup lights, which is an incandescent bulb. But the turn signals are LED, the brake lights are LED. So, really nice looking rear end. I like what they did with the update. Uh, they just kind of used the same concept, but just kind of modernized it. So, nice chrome dual exhaust tips, reflectors on the lower bumper here. So let's take a look at uh, what I know you guys want to see, and that's under the hood. Ruby, have already done something to it. What else would you expect? So go in here, pop it right there. I don't know how I feel about that. It's kind of like 08 Focus to me, but it is a Ford. They like to do that kind of thing. So under here you will find the 3.5 liter V6 driving the front wheels only. We did not go for the all wheel drive model, not necessary. It's a big car, it's front wheel drive. If it snows, it'll make it through. So this one makes, I believe, 290 horsepower, somewhere around there. Um, and this engine has been around for quite a while. It's related to the old uh, Duratec V6s from the 90s, but been very much updated. TIVCT, all that good stuff. I don't believe this is not direct injected. Uh, just regular fuel injection. But, of course, you guys can see, we've added the K&N intake. So, I, I know it's electronic throttle, so I can't sit here and pull the throttle cable like I could on my car. So, I'll sit inside and I'll do a little rev for you. But, just got the oil change today, actually. So, first oil change is already done. Stay right here. You can kind of hear the uh, intake growl, but you really only hear it when you get on the road, which will be my next video. I've already spent 14 minutes on this. So, anyways, uh, so this is the new car. Let me know what you guys think. Comments, likes, whatever. Leave it down below. Thanks for watching, everyone, and look forward to a driving video because that's what will be next. I really want you guys to hear this intake. So thanks, everyone. Like, subscribe, and we'll see you soon.